my fellow brother and sister, great viewers in this leadership class. It's my joy again to come your way. As I've always done, I will keep wishing you well and extending goodwill to you wherever you are in this part of the world, day or night. It shall be well with you. Once again, as I welcome you, I want to share with you you are perhaps familiar with and uh, needs re-emphasis or if it's new to you. A great virtue and trait of leaders is wisdom. Somehow, wisdom takes you to a level above others. Not as a thing that you pursue after, but that comes after you, pursues after you, and raises you up. You see, people who rise don't actually scheme to rise. What they do make them to rise. It's natural. It's like if you put a balloon or any object that looks like it, try to dip it in water. It will float above the water. So anywhere you are, there are things that just distinguishes you. And that is particularly the subject of wisdom. Wisdom distinguishes people. As a matter of fact, the Bible recognizes that by wisdom, kings reign. So you cannot be wise and be a subject. It will take you up. To the ruling class. Solomon, a man renowned to be very wise, in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 said, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning. So learning is a practice of leaders. That's why if you're a learner today, get ready to become a leader tomorrow. It's a natural sequence. And if you keep learning as a leader, you will turn out to become a great leader. You become a counselor, to others like Solomon was. So the core element of leadership is wisdom and the major access to it is learning. In life, nothing frustrates like ignorance. You see, all the pains we have are indicators of ignorance because the more you know, the better you live. This also informs why learners are potential leaders and leaders are those who remain committed learners. Real leader's altitude can be predetermined by its learning attitude. Those who wake up to learn will certainly rise to lead in the ultimate. So keep learning and you will never stop leaping. Don't try to jump up. Learn your way up to stay up. Seek to learn and you'll never beg to lead. There are those who can vast to be leaders because they are not learners. Bend to learn and you will rise to lead. Where there is no end to learning, so is there no end to leading. Keep learning, keep rising, keep leading. But as you can see, it takes hearing to become a learner. And it takes humility to be open in your ears to learn. Nothing destroys the attitude or the practice of learning like pride. Proud people say, I know it. He may not even say it verbally, but in his mind, he says it. Sometimes as he finds somebody speaking, he says, what does he know? What is he saying? We know this one before. But you see, uh, knowledge has no end. And no one is a custodian of knowledge in absolute sense. Knowledge is acquired by a little here, a little there. Precept upon precept, the Bible says. Concept upon concept, because there is no end to it. Every statement made by somebody is an extension of the knowledge you possess. No wonder the word of God says, let him that thinks he knows, quickly advise himself that he does not know yet as he ought to know. You see, there is what you know, and there is what you ought to know. What you know now becomes stale because you already know it. What you don't know that you ought to know is what is fresh. And the world does not deal on stale information, but current information. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2 admonishes us accordingly. If you think you know something, you should know somebody already knows something better than you know. So listen to him. And that calls for humility. Humility is about being level-headed, acknowledging that treasures are contained in others which you need for your well-being. Now, to buttress this, I want to bring to you an example of one great disciple of Christ whose record came to be or to bear in the days of Paul. His name is Apollos. In Acts chapter 18, verse 24 to 28, we find the credentials and the background, the pre-degree, of this man called Apollos. He was outstandingly rich. I love his pre-degree, listed as follows. You may take time, or maybe as I'm sharing with you, get into that scriptures to find out about him. Number one, he was born in a famous city, Alexandria, in verse 24. You know, uh, in those days, and perhaps even up to now, people take pride where they are born. The city where they grew, you see, people say, oh, I'm... Um, 
from Tososo place, I'm from this nation, I'm from this state, I'm from this city. They make pride of it. What more? He was highly educated and intelligent. The Bible describes him as eloquent. He had a good command of communication and conversation. Again, in the series of his credential, he was full of revelation. The scripture records that he was mighty in scriptures. He was vast. He was not a main man. He was said to be well-traveled, exposed. He understood cultures. He was well-taught and instructed in God's ways. So he wasn't an ordinary person. He knew the ways of God. And to add to that, he was very zealous. He was fervent in spirit. He was not a man with cold attitude. And his very rich credential went for that to indicate that he was sound and accurate in teaching. He taught diligently. He was also passionate and convincing because the Bible records that he spake boldly. You find that in verse 26. He, he spoke from depth of conviction. Yet, he discovered some things were lacking when he met with a couple. I guess they were missionaries that came his way, Aquila and Priscilla. Perhaps they did not even have as much of the credentials, highly rated credentials that he had. Maybe they have not traveled as much and not as visible as Apollos. Here, let me call our attention to this. Whether young or old, you may be so exposed, but yet lacking some things. That's why, especially those of us who need and we are seeking for mentors. See, your mentor doesn't have to know or rather may not have to be as exposed as you are. It may not be as visible as you are, but there are things that he has learned that can be of help to you. So Apollos in his wisdom, despite all that he knew, humbled himself. He came down to the authority of Aquila and Priscilla. He chose to follow them secretly, privately, or perhaps openly, so he could get more coordinated and organized, more rooted and grounded, get more spiritually thicker, taller, and towering. And hear what the scripture says in verse 27, when he was done with them, when he was disposed to pass into another realm, another phase of his assignment. In verse 28, the scripture tells us that he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly, showing the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Something was added to him. Now see, while we are happy about what we have, don't boast of what you have because there's something richer beyond what you know and beyond what you have. That's what I do in my personal life. I listen to everybody whom I'm privileged and opportune to meet because there's something each person has. There's a deposit in individuals that you meet. Open up, humble yourself, learn from them, and in the end, you become not just as great as they are, but in some cases, even greater than they. I pray that such opportunity as you have, as I'm sharing with you right now, will be an additional blessing to you. Look forward to hearing your testimony. Don't fail to get across to us. When you do, God bless you mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.